and welcome to another session in English language. Today we are going to be looking at different aspects of English language and we are going to focus on the following aspects. We are going to focus on structure, we are going to focus on what are clauses, we are going to look at different types of clauses. Then we are also going to focus on what is called speech writing, speech writing. And lastly, we are going to focus on vocabulary development, we are going to look at Latin words. But before that today, let us review our previous lesson. Welcome back. Like I said, we are going to focus on the following aspects today. We're going to look at structure, we're going to look at clauses, we're going to look at speech writing under essays, and we're also going to look at vocabulary development on Latin words. So let's begin with structure. What are clauses? What is a clause? What is a clause? Like we know, a clause is a group of words that contain a finite word verb. A group of words that contain what a finite word verb. That's what we call a clause. Okay? We can call it a group of words that contain what a finite verb. So let's move on. Now, meaning that a clause should have what you call a subject and a predicate. A clause should have what you call a subject and a predicate. What is the subject? Subject is what is spoken about in a sentence. Subject is what is spoken about. But the predicate is what is being said about the subject. Okay? Predicate is what is being said about the subject. In other words, we are saying that if we say a clause if we say a clause in English, we mean that it must contain both a subject and a predicate. A clause must contain both a subject and a predicate. For instance, in this sentence, it do bought a piece of land. It do here is the subject because what is being spoken about is what it do or who the performer of an action is is it do. But if you look at bought a piece of land, what is being said about the or what is being said about the subject? Okay, what is being said or said about the subject is to us the predicate. So what did the wood do? The wood bought a piece of land. So under this, let me represent um, the, the wood here as S. Okay. So here is a subject and under here P predicate. Okay. So that is that. So there are two main types of clauses in the English language. We have the main clause and we have the subordinate clause, or you say we have the independent clauses and the dependent clause. So don't forget that. So we can do something like this. So clause can be divided into two. We have the main clause and we have the subordinate clause. Okay? We have the main clause and the what? Subordinate clause. So now, what are main clauses or independent clauses? These are clauses that expresses a complete thought. Don't forget that. Okay? It expresses a complete thought and can stand on its own. Okay? It can always stand on its own. But in the case of a dependent clause, where you hear the word to depend, it actually means it does not what express a complete thought thought and not stand on its own to express or convey a 
complete sense. Okay, it must depend on the what independent clause for its meaning. Okay, so we'll look at other examples as we go on. Now, don't forget what are the two types of clauses: main clause and subordinate clause. Now, under the subordinate clauses, we can categorize them into three. We have what we call noun clauses, we have what we call adjectival clauses, and we have what we call adverbial clauses. So, by the corner of the notes here, let me do something like this. So, what is this clause? Can be categorized into three key, three major categories. We have what we call the noun clause, we have what we call adjectival. We have last one called adverbial. Okay, so those these are the three types of subordinate clause: noun clause, adjectival clause, and adverbial clause. Okay, so a noun clause behaves like we know the name implies. It behaves like a noun. Okay, it performs the function of a noun. And how do we know or distinguish between noun clauses? Okay, a noun clause is always introduced. Or usually introduced by the following words. Okay, it's usually introduced by the following words, and I've underlined those words to you, or for you rather. So we have what you call what and that. Okay, what and that most times. Okay, now give examples. So we say. That he was insulted, painted him, pained him a great deal. That he was insulted, pained him a great deal. Okay, so that that he was insulted is what you call the noun clause. Okay, that he was insulted in a great deal. We can also have that she left her husband. She left her husband is known to all her friends. Is known to all her friends. Okay, so I could underline the expression that she left her husband. Okay, so this is an example of what you call a noun clause, a performing the subject of or by what we call the subjective case, okay? That she left her husband is known to all of her friends, okay? So we look at the functions of a noun clause. So if you follow closely, every noun clause behaves like a noun. It can function as the object, as the subject of the sentence, the object of the sentence, the complement of the subject, the complement of the object, and the complement of what a preposition so you can see so every word that is in italics that is this for these words that are on the line okay they are all you know noun clauses okay but they are occupying different positions for instance if you look at the sentence what he said is bitter so what he said is a noun clause okay Instead, uh, and it's occupied the position of what a subject. Okay, you'll be asked this most times under what you call grammatical name and grammatical function. So you must follow closely this lesson, go over it again in order to want to increase your performance on this. Okay, so you can occupy the position of um, the object, it can also be what you call the complement of the subject. Okay, complement simply means it's telling us more. About the subject. Honesty is what we want. Okay? For this time, you can say the most important thing is that he arrived. So that he has arrived is complementing the subject. And what's the subject here? The most important word. Okay? That is the word subject. Okay? The most important thing here is the subject. Alright? So this is the complement of the subject. So we have also the other. Uh, Complement of the object, okay, and 
that. So let's move on with day two, what you call adjectival clause. When you hear the word adjectival, it's got from the word adjective. So it means all adjectival clauses perform the functions of an adjective. Okay? All adjectival clauses perform the functions of an adjective. So how do we know? Okay? So how do we do that? So we can determine that because adjectival clauses are used to are introduced by the following words. Not introduced by who, whom, whose, that, and which. Look at it, it's different from the uh, what you call noun clause, where we say it's introduced by only that and what. But in the case of um, adjectival clauses, it's introduced by who, whom, whose, that. So when I see them in certain expressions, I know that this is an adjectival clause. For instance, the man who came here is a teacher. Okay, the man who came here is a teacher so who came here is the adjective clause it's telling us about who the man remember adjectives tell us more of this or modifies a noun okay so it's telling us about the man okay who came here all right so who came here is what you call an adjective clause whose car was stolen okay it tells us about who the lady so the lady here is the noun whose car was to live with the adjectival clause, right? So I believe you got that. Okay, so let's quickly move to what is called adverbial clause. Like I told you, the name will determine the function. Okay, the name of the clause will determine what its function. So if we have adverbial clause, we simply say it's a subordinate clause that performs what the function of what an adverb. Okay, don't forget that it's very very important to okay so adverbial clauses perform the functions of what adverbs and what do adverbs do tell us more about the verb in a sentence okay the verb the adjective or another word adverb so they tell us okay how the verb is performed when the verb was performed where the verb was performed why the verb was performed, to what extent the verb was performed, under what condition is the verb performed, the action of the verb in the sentence. Alright, so these are examples. She sings as if she were happy. Okay, she sings as if she were happy. So if you look at the expression in it, and it's this word that is called this expression on the line, as if she were happy, is telling us how she sings okay it shows us how she sings so that is an example of an adverbial clause Adis, Ada saw him when he she came to his office so if you look at this expression when she came to his office he's telling us when she saw him okay so it's an adverbial clause of time so we have different adverbial clauses. We have adverbial clause of manner, time, place, result, concession, and the like. So I give examples. Just follow those examples in the sentence. So every word in italics there is an adverbial clause. Okay. Now let's move on to what you call speech writing. Now when you're writing a speech. You remember the different types of essays. I told you we have what we call narrative essay. Okay, just to cast your mind back, we have what we call descriptive essay. We have what we call argumentative essay. We have what we call expository essay. But the aspect of essay we are focusing on writing today is writing speeches, and we use speeches at um, occasions. Okay, so that's where we use a speech. Okay, you might be at a formal occasion. Okay, and you are required to deliver a speech. For instance, you are the head prefect as a student in your school. Okay, you are, you are, you are required to, want to deliver a speech. So you must learn how to write a speech. Okay, you are an important dignitary, you are the chairman at an occasion. Okay, maybe an inter house sports event, and you have to deliver what a speech. So there are various reasons why and so a speech 
Or let me say speech writing is a formal type of word writing. So when we are writing a speech, we are always informal in our words, language and structure. Okay? Our language and structure is formal in, 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 in speech words writing. Now, how do we write speeches? We have what we call the introducing the topic, so you have to do that. Okay, whatever topic you are given, you have to try to introduce it in a manner that, you know, arouses the interest of your world audience. So, always learn to write, you know, your introduction in a very creative way. And so, you have to do that in a captivating manner. So, your introduction must be captivating. Okay? Then also, right, you must um, also learn to develop your your topic, right, in a logical sequence. Okay, you must learn to develop your 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 ideas. Okay, you, how you present your ideas must be sequential. Okay, they must follow in an order. They must not be haphazard. Okay, they must be sequential, they must be linking. Okay, there must be a link from one idea towards the other. Then also we have what we call the concluding part of your speech. Okay, so you also wrap up your speech in a captivating manner too. Alright, so let's see a sample here. As the senior prefect, okay, that is outgoing, okay, that has graduated from the secondary school education and you are present at your valedictory service so we want to see how you would write your speech this is just a specimen okay so this is a farewell speech by johnson during the graduation ceremony in baptist college banjo okay and um, johnson joe is an ss3 student so it begins with the honorable commission of education is you know i told you you begin with salutation okay Remember that. Let's get back to that. Under this, okay. So you begin with what salutation, okay. So always begin your speech with what salutation you recognize. The honourable commissioner of education, our dear parents, the principal, our teachers, worthy graduating students, and my fellow students. Okay. So in your first paragraph, you say something like i appreciate i want to thank the school for the privilege and the opportunity you know to stand here on this esteemed podium to deliver this speech today so you you know appreciate the privilege of being permitted to speak and also explain the importance of your of the ceremony then state why you are there then commend the graduate students for their you know effort thus far in over the years okay so that's what you do in the second paragraph in the third paragraph, you also remind them of what of the lessons of hard work, determination, and what uprightness, and alongside diligence, excellence, just remind them of the virtues they have learned in school. Then, in paragraph four, you inform them of what awaits them outside there. You know, out there's a life after secondary school. We talk about exams. We talk about campus life. You know about the dangers of the newfound liberty because you have a whole lot thrown at them and also you have to counsel them right in your speech on the need to choose right the path of being what academic socially and morally upright that is they need to be high achievers in their uh in their different spheres of influence and lastly they conclude by thanking the audience for what listening to your speech and I also appreciate the parents for their faith and support and you know contributions in the lives of their children and also wish the graduates or the graduates great success in life. Alright so that is how to round off an excellent of speech writing. So the last part we are focusing today is on latin expressions used in english like i know like i've told you before latin is was one of the core or it still remains one of the 
languages that is mostly spoken most english words or languages in the world today derived their um, origin or, or descent from what latin okay so latin was widely spoken for years all over the world okay so we have some words that are imported from latin into english language so whenever you see this um, word or expressions know that they have a latin origin like the word ad hoc ad hoc is used to what to is a latin word you know saying that this word is intended for a particular purpose for instance i can say an ad hoc committee okay an ad hoc committee it means this committee has a special purpose for setting up that committee okay or if i say an ad hoc meeting okay an ad hoc meeting okay it means this meeting has a particular purpose if i say the word bona fide okay the word bona fide it means genuine if i say the word bona fide okay it means genuine original okay or original right so that's the word that says bona fide student is a genuine student and we can also have what you call curriculum vitae we'll be coming across this also curriculum vitae all right which is abbreviated cv because when you are leaving school you say how to pass on my cv or what you call the resume okay though there's a difference between cv and resume but i don't want to bore you with all of that detail it just means a summary of your qualification all right and career that will help you when you are applying for a job then we also have the word de facto okay the word de facto means practically using force okay or something that is in practice then we also have this common one etc but you still write e t c right it's etc it means and the rest so it means it's and so it means that that's um, uh, whatever you're discussing there has other um let me say examples or what you call um, illustrations so we have also what you call exemplary gratia okay which you abbreviate as what eg Okay, so most of the time you write eg 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 okay, the full meaning is exemplary gratia which means for the sake of what an example for the sake of an example so this etc and this is what exemplary gratia we have other ones we have impromptu impromptu means unprepared okay impromptu means unprepared okay impromptu means unprepared okay so if I say come and give an impromptu speech, it means come and give a speech that you are not prepared. Okay, an impromptu speech or an impromptu meeting. Okay, we also have what we call personal non grata. Personal non grata simply means somebody who is not what welcome. Personal non grata. Okay, an unwelcomed person. So with this, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for joining the class today. In order to refresh your memory and recall all that was taught in this lesson, I would encourage and love that you take the test that appears on your screen.